You're listening to Experience Imagination, a themed entertainment design podcast presented by Falcons Creative Group. Every episode, we discuss a new topic with a panel of creative professionals. Hi, I'm Cecil McPurry, President and Chief Creative Officer of Falcons. Hey everyone, welcome to our first episode of 2019. This is, I guess, our official season two start. I'm Abhinav Narayan, normally the moderator for the episode, but this time uh, we're actually doing something a little bit different. I'll talk to Cecil to find out more. Hey Cecil, how's it going? Good, how you doing Abhinav? Doing good. We have a very interesting episode. The format's going to be a little different this time. You were invited to a conference at the end of last year, and I'll let you continue the story there. The colleague of mine, Ron Swidler, uh, gave me a call and asked me if I was interested in participating in a conference called Fast Forward in Nashville. And so I got the voicemail and I did a little bit of research and I started to realize that this was quite special. They had produced four other Fast Forwards and it was really refreshing to see the format that they were doing. So I extended myself and said, yes, I would love to participate since the theme of the conference was going to be revolving around story. They have a different theme every year, and this year it was story. Yes. Since um, we have kind of crossed over in some hospitality experiences, one specifically being Dragon's Treasure and Macau in a Casino, where we created a spectacular entertainment dome experience, world's largest which Ron was involved with the Hard Rock Casino component Mm -hmm. and hotel. That's where we crossed paths. And he said that was an amazing experience. It was story-driven. I feel the hospitality industry would embrace that type of thinking. Benefit from that different perspective. Exactly. So I said, sure, it sounds good. So in just a few minutes, we'll cut over to a conversation that you had the opportunity to have uh, after the conference just recently with Ron Swidler as well as his colleague Adam Kubrick. Before we get there, though, I wanted to take a few minutes and kind of talk to you about what did you actually end up presenting at the conference? So this was unique because the audience was different, and I wanted to make it a little bit more personal because I think the way the other speakers were talking, it was trying to understand how their expertise in their respective industry applied story to success and how it would apply to hospitality. So... We basically started to break it down and think about how we could tell my story and my journey and find some level of consistency in my own journey and how it applied to Falcon's Creative Group. Great. Let's go ahead and cut to your conversation with Ron and Adam. Sounds good. It'd be great if you guys could introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about your companies. That would, I think, be helpful. Yeah, so I'll give you a bit of a background on me. This is Ron Swidler. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer for the Gettys Group, been with the company for 30 years. And the Gettys Group is a global hospitality, interior design, branding, development, and procurement company. Our focus is firmly on hospitality, and we span from the luxury level of hospitality down to the more affordable level in terms of projects. And we do lots of projects that are related to hospitality, but feel like a bit of a brand extension beyond what you'd normally think of for hospitality being hotels and that we're actively involved in some cruise ship projects and furnished apartment projects, residential projects, et cetera, standalone restaurants, things like that. But it all has this kind of heart of hospitality behind it. Great. Thank you, Ron. Adam? Sure. I'm Adam Kubrick with Global Allies. We do uh, two types of seating for hospitality. We do desk chairs and banquet chairs for hotels, Uh, but we are rather large and rather involved with a lot of the major brands, owners, uh, design firms. And so I feel like we have a unique perspective in that uh, we are regularly in the casinos offices, seeing what's happening in Las Vegas and talking to the Marriott's and Hilton's and Hyatt's of the world and seeing what's happening at a macro level uh, and also dealing with design firms and owners about individual projects. So we have this sort of unique perspective from top to bottom that we're able to accumulate through chairs. And uh, we've been doing that for about 15 years now, but it's amazing. You can just sell chairs and just sell them to hotels and gain uh, not just a a sizable business out of it, but a a really interesting, unique perspective on hospitality. Awesome. Thank you for that insight. You know, one of the things that I 
was fortunate enough was to participate in your last Fast Forward conference, and I am still talking about it today. I, I was blown away with the quality uh, of the experience, the intimacy of the experience, the scale of the experience. I know those are kind of two different things, but I felt like it was such a significant conference in the sense of the outreach, the players that were involved. How did you guys come up with this idea? And, and more importantly, how did you create the secret sauce of an experience that is so unique? I've never experienced anything like it. Maybe you guys can give a little bit of history of how you got to where you, you got with Fast Forward. Well, first, thanks for being there and for contributing so much to the success of the event. We loved having you there. You blew people's minds with the kind of work that you guys do and, and how you went about sharing it. And there's still chatter about your presentation, um, not just the event itself, but your contribution to it. So thank you so much again, Cecil, for doing what you did. That, you know, this goes back to, I, I guess we can tell this story, Adam. Can we tell the origination story? The Absolutely. This is the place. Yeah. Okay. So it actually goes back to 2004 when we um, worked together on developing something called the Hotel of Tomorrow Project, which was an industry wide think tank that kind of grew through 2005 and 2006 to include more and more companies and participants. But the belief, Cecil, was that the hotel industry was advancing very quickly and that there was a, a thirst for new ideas and new experiences among guests and consumers. And the kinds of conferences that we were going to weren't really covering a broad enough spectrum and what they weren't creating a forum for dialogue and interactive workshopping among people who are in the same industry, but don't often get a chance to spend time together. So we hatched this idea of bringing manufacturers, designers, architects, brands, and unrelated people to the table to envision the future of the hospitality industry. But after that great experience together, Adam and I were together at an industry event in Monaco and almost as a kind of rebellious dare, we said, let's create something even better than the Hotel of Tomorrow, but let's hold on to the best parts of the workshopping methodology and inspirational kinds of speakers and uh, let's create an event on our terms that is purely a Global Allies and Gettys event rather than Hotel of Tomorrow. We expanded to a, a much larger group. And uh, the net result is what got hatched about a year later, which was what we figured out to, to be named the, the Fast Forward Conference. A Adam, what, what's your part of that story? I really knew we were onto something after um, one of the first speakers at our very first Fast Forward came up to both Ron and I and said, I can't wait to talk about that with my team on Monday. And we haven't been looking at things the way that person was just talking about. Um, and it, it was a sort of, you know, unique business perspective that this particular attendee needed at that moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me was the most exciting part. You know, we were finally addressing this sort of gap of no one's talking about how I can do better with my business or my industry uh, they're they're all sort of uh, just kind of trying to inspire in other ways. And so we wanted this kind of practical hands-on approach. And both Ron and I had attended a lot of conferences and events of different types. And Ron had spoken at many. And we had seen the things that work and the things that didn't. And uh, really tried to take some of the best practices that we could from each and eventually develop our own practices. It was really a culmination of you know the experience and the knowledge we gained over the years starting all the way back at hotel of tomorrow and uh running through you know when ron and i were slogging through our difficult work life in monaco overlooking the ocean um, <laughs> as tough as that was you know uh somehow that inspired you know the creativity and the thought and then through the the past several events it always comes back to to the experience that the attendees are having it's never, oh, we have a, you know, green juice ice luge and, you know, for breakfast, all that stuff is cool <laughs> right. and fun. That, that was an actual um, fast forward thing we had one year too, which was kind of, <laughs> it was great. But, um, but, but I it wasn't about the person that. I was talking right. about, 
Yeah, the person I'm yeah. talking about didn't go back on Monday and say, oh, my God, they had an ice luge for green juice. How ridiculous is that? He said, you know, oh, my gosh, I have a new way to think about how we're going to get customers for the next decade. And that, mm-hmm. to me, is so much more important. One of the things that was enriching for me was how participatory it was. I spoke at SAID. I spoke at different events uh, in our industry. And it was truly a conversation rather than me put on a pedestal to talk to you. It was, it was with you. And that was really refreshing to see. And it's one of those things that looking at it and experiencing it, it's hard to describe. It seems so simple. But in reality, as, as you try to decipher how you execute it, it's like a little bit of a magical experience that, that <laughs> you guys created. Yeah, it, well, I, I certainly appreciate uh, that sentiment because it, it, it is deliberate. You know, you were talking about the secret sauce earlier. That's a big, big part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you get a bunch of talented people in a room and you unleash them. And you get this range from irreverent to brilliant and everything in between. And uh, that's the awesome part. And there's no pressure on anyone. There's no client. There's no budget. There's no right. anything. It's just an ideation session where the best idea wins. And a lot of people, unfortunately, have kind of gotten removed from that over the years, especially as they've you know, been promoted in their jobs and, and are dealing with bigger and bigger clients and customers and projects. You lose some of that sort of uh, just ability to have a little fun with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just going to layer on to it, Cecil. And, and there, were, there are a couple other secret ingredients that uh, I'm willing to share with you and your listeners for, for this podcast today. You know, Adam and I treat that guest list like a dinner party. Mm. And it's an interesting idea when you think of it that way. It just happens to be a dinner party that starts Sunday afternoon and ends Tuesday afternoon. But if you have found yourself, have been fortunate enough to find yourself at a dinner party where you're seated next to some really interesting people, and you even get to change tables a bunch of times and meet other people while you're there, and you find yourself engaged in some really fascinating conversations with people who have interesting stories to tell, but also have a lot of heart and passion about what it is that they do. That's a a key ingredient to the success of the event is surrounding yourself with the kind of people who really can inspire you and who are eager to be inspired by you. Uh, I remember years ago going to a, a great conference, the C2MTL conference up in Montreal, and they had a um, an app that was running prior to the event that allowed you to publicly share what it was that you hoped to offer someone else at the event, in the event that you got a chance to talk to somebody, what did you have to offer, and then what were you hoping to obtain? And it was a matchmaking idea. And, but that fundamental idea is what we've thought about when forming the guest list. Are these people the kind of people that, of course, have a lot to offer, but are they willing to offer it? And are they looking to be inspired themselves? And ultimately, I think that's what we're all promising um, those of us with a, a similar kind of DNA and a, and a passion for what we do and how we do it. And uh, those of us, uh, like all three of us, we're trying to make a bit of a difference in the lives of those around us. And that is to bring a level of caring and generosity to our projects, to our client relationships, to our teams. And why wouldn't an event have that same kind of character if we were able to, to execute? So that's really what the, the those two secret kind of elements are making people feel great and treating it like a dinner party. At the end of the event, no one wanted to leave. <laughs> no one wanted to be the first to leave. It was amazing. We were sitting out in the patio having lunch. Uh, the food trucks were there serving amazing food. The sun was out. It was a, a beautiful afternoon. But everyone was like, I don't want this to end. <laughs> it's like, shoot, we have a plane to catch, but this is this is a tough one to, to try to break away from. Yeah, you definitely set up a, an amazing culture. You know, one of the things that I wanted well, to you. understand was you brought in some amazing interactive experiences like the Enchanted Objects to promote and provoke conversation. Is this something you guys implemented in, in the first fast forward, or is this something you progressed as you... You went through. Adam, you want to take that one? Sure. We uh, didn't do 
the Enchanted Objects workshop in previous Fast Forward. That was uh, something that first hit Fast Forward this year. But we've done similar type um, workshops and ideation sessions. I mean, you know, the wonderful thing about Enchanted Objects is that, you know, you get to sort of play magician for a minute, right? You get to violate all the rules of technology and budget and is this feasible or is it not? And say, you know, as Venus Williams said, I want a front door that serves as a butler, right? And yeah. can sense if it's room service or if it's, you know, a fan who somehow got to my hotel room floor or if it's, uh, you know, someone I want to let in. And I don't know if anyone is in the process of making a smart door like that, but for the ideation session, it doesn't matter, right? And right. so, the beautiful thing is uh, an enchanted object just allows unlimited creativity in any direction. And uh, again, you, you combine that with the talent of design and hotel people in that room. And uh, you, you usually end up getting some really, really interesting ideas. And whether or not they're viable, whether or not um, you know we start producing them or making them or Ron starts incorporating them into the project uh, that he's working on is totally immaterial. It's just the the creative process of it is what's always so great. I I know there was a lot of good ideas that came out of there. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that's a place I would actually go to and participate as as a consumer. There were some really good ideas, and then there were so many humorous <laughs> ideas that came out of that enchanted objects exercise. It was so fun to experience it. It, it was one thing Ron really uh, wanted from the very beginning was to make sure people were on stage and taking ownership for and presenting whatever idea that they came up with. And um, the people we happen to want at our dinner party, as Ron called it, tend to be some pretty humorous people. <laughs> and so you get someone on stage with a bunch of eyes on them and uh, some of the ideas tend to skew towards either ridiculous or comical. Um, but they're all still often based in something real and tangible and a real problem that someone has faced in a room. Just to add to that, we're not telling them what we're hoping that we're going to get out of it. We're giving them a chance to play. And I think everyone has an intriguing story to tell. And it's funny because everyone now has so many platforms to be able to tell their own story. Social media creates that opportunity for us and the kind of connectedness of our world. What we try to do is strip away the infomercial nature of, that we find in many conferences. And we're also trying to deliver against something that is kind of very au courant, which is how do we tell our story? See, so this is your world, right? Mm -hmm. This is what you do every day is construct not only these incredible story backdrops, but also you're creating mechanisms for people to live out their own stories. It was refreshing for me. Obviously, story is yes, definitely part of our DNA. It's it's and and guest expectations is driven around story. Um, you know, some of the big developments that are happening now in our industry are literally intellectual property that's you know been acquired and and now are being executed. And what's interesting for me was being invited to fast forward and and understanding the hospitality world. You're starting to see this merge of kind of spectacle entertainment, um, location-based entertainment, merging with hospitality. They're starting to blur the lines between them. You can see the momentums moving forward. For those that are successful, story becomes a, a major part of that success. I think it's a sort of natural step after the, um, the Instagram photo reality we've kind of been living with in the hospitality industry mm -hmm. over the past couple of years, where everything was designed for the, the photographic moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the trend moving forward is much more experiential than just the picture. You know, having that photo is, is no longer really enough. And I think a lot of people are trying to actively more live that experience and be in that moment rather than just uh, chronicle it. And so, you know, it makes perfect sense that not just storytelling, but experiential storytelling, immersive storytelling, uh, where you're really part of the story yourself. I was going to expand on that for a second, which is, I think experiences with purpose is becoming an opportunity that is getting a little more focus. And part of what we've created at Fast Forward is just a small piece of a larger puzzle 
which is how are we using our time to change ourselves and change the world? Mm -hmm. And if we can create things that allow people to achieve a greater purpose and help themselves and help others, then it's not just about having that photo or having experience, you know, beyond that photo, call it a, a short film of an experience, but doing something that has even greater meaning. Uh, to me, I think one of the things that's most amazing about Fast Forward is you've the, the brain trust that was there, right? I mean, you have some real creative and decision-making resources all sitting together. They're the ones who could take this baton and, and push it forward in the hospitality industry. You guys have created this amazing opportunity to, for collaboration, which is, I've, I've never seen that. I mean, you have some of the toughest competitors uh, sitting next to each other, ideating new ideas about how the industry can benefit from some of these fresh ideas moving forward. That's really refreshing. You know, it, it's reinforcing something that's true to the hospitality industry overall, which is there's a sensibility of caring for one another. You know, the Ritz Carlton, ladies and gentlemen, serving ladies and gentlemen idea that, you know, there's a, a level of care that goes into this industry. And perhaps we can create a forum for people to get to know one another and care for one another and create a forum that allows them to do that. And if that's, if that's a byproduct of what we're doing, then beautiful. And they're yes. willing to be there. I mean, that, that goes back to the guest list, right? Yes, I can these, see that. These people are willing to not only sit next to them, but share ideas with them that could benefit either of their companies or both of their companies. Right. Maybe some of what we're hoping to change in the world and in our industry needs the collaboration between competitors to do it. What a, what a great premise. That analogy was perfect. I was intimidated when I first got invited because I, you know, I didn't know the hospitality world that, that well. But I felt so welcomed um, by everybody, and it was, it was really enlightening for me. I, I immediately, that evening, after seeing some of the guest speakers, I mean, Sam Hinkey and, and Maxime, the, the chef, talking about storytelling through food, I mean, it was just refreshing to see a different perspective of how story influences uh, experiences. I think one of the interesting things in there is that whether it's the attendees or the speakers, creativity tends to recognize and respect creativity, mm -hmm. regardless of the outlet for that creativity. So even someone who could not be in the more opposite field than any of us, of Sam Hinky, who tried to, you know, reshape a basketball team in the most creative way possible within the confines of his set of rules, or Maxime, who is working with a set of ingredients and trying to express a story no matter the industry, no matter the application, the creative part itself is what everyone tends to draw their inspiration from. And so it keeps us trying to keep the event and the attendees as creative as possible. On top of that, you and I both like the podcast 99% Invisible Roman Mars podcast. And he helps explain the creative process behind a lot of the things that we experience and interact with every day in the world. The theme being 99% Invisible is how much you don't know mm. about the creative process. And when you see someone like Chef Maxime cooking and telling his personal story, or you know, we have a band like Gin House get up there and talk about what inspires the music that they create and you have a greater level of understanding and appreciation for what it takes to create something really beautiful and memorable. And that's why we do what we do, I think, is because we really love what we do and we're willing to invest the necessary time to create something that is worth sharing. And uh, it's a pleasure to be able to shine a light on some of these creatives, including young chefs who otherwise, you know, we brought Chef Max from Lyon, France, because he's a very special guy. And we'd like to make sure that some of these young people who might otherwise not have a chance to share a stage or share the room with people as accomplished as you, Cecil, and give them a platform to share their ideas and their perspective on the world. Because the truth is that this young generation is seeing the world differently than mm. the previous generations have. And we want to make sure that they get a chance to tell their stories as well. Wow, this is amazing. Thank you guys for sharing so much uh, insight on Fast Forward and well, thank you again for accommodating this. 
I, I can't end the podcast without thanking Ron and, and his team at Gettys because that's amazing. Us look really good. They do such an incredible job. It's fun to get up there on stage and take a bunch of the credit, but really these guys at Gettys, they're the real deal and they're they're the reason that, that this event has been so great. So we are so thrilled you were able to join us, Cecil, and uh, thank you again for having us on this podcast. You're welcome. Yeah, it was top-notch, amazing experience, and it, it I I want to share it with the world. So thank you for participating again, guys. Have a great week. All right. All right thanks. Take care. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Uh, we want to thank Ron and Adam again for uh, joining us on today's episode. Uh, Cecil, any closing thoughts on this? You guys had an awesome discussion. Yeah, it was really good. Um, as you can tell, my enthusiasm about the conference was present in <laughs> yeah. in uh, hosting that dialogue. Um, yeah, it, it was an amazing experience. Um, I'm hoping to be invited again. <laughs> um, but obviously, the secret sauce was like a family dinner. Yeah, I, um, I love that uh, motif that yeah, they used. Yeah, it was really, it was spot on. I could see how that could play. And I see what you mean about seeing this as possibly the future of these type of conventions. I, I loved what they were saying about how, you know, you were actually working with competition. There there was yeah. no worry it was about like, budget or... Yeah, people's position in participating was above their role in their company. Yeah. It was about bettering the industry. Pure collective creativity. Yes. It was fantastic. Awesome. Great. Well, we'll see you in the next episode, Cecil. Thank you. Real quick reminder before we go, you can send any questions or comments you may have to us at the email address podcast at falconscreativegroup.com. We've already got some great emails coming in and we are working to respond to them and we'd love to hear from you soon. Thanks. This has been Experience Imagination. For more information about this episode's discussion, be sure to visit our blog at falconscreativegroup.com. And don't forget to follow Falcons Creative Group on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram.